Vikram, it's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, not every day I get an accomplished author sit with me and talk. <laughs> so it's refreshing. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you did your first book, Major Head. Uh, you, we just were talking about your recent book, which you focused on technology, you said. Um, as an accomplished author and now teaching at University of California, Berkeley, uh, there are people who want to, you know, follow in your footsteps. <laughs> uh, there are a few major components to it, I think. Uh, one is understanding the technology. The other is picking up the nuance of the society. Right. And then trying to make sense so it relates to your readers. Right. right. Um, so let's touch and uh, expand on, you know, these elements as a thinker, as a writer, as an artist. Well, I mean, I think um, as a writer, I mean, my own stories um, was very simple. I loved telling stories and reading stories when I was a kid. Um, and at the time, in India especially, the idea that you were going to um, grow up and become a writer was absurd. You know, My grandfather once asked me, Bade hoge kya karoge? So I said, I want to be a writer. So he said, Aur kya karoge? <laughs> and he was very accurate. I mean, it still is the case. In, not just in India, but in the, in the world over, that, that you cannot make a living from doing art. Right? So most artists of any, in any genre have a job that feeds them and their children and, and families. So for me, um, it's been a long quest, and I think you have to have a certain amount of perseverance, stubbornness. And I did it because I couldn't get away from the desire to tell stories. And I would have written them whether I had been published or not. And I've been very lucky in that they started then getting published and um, so I've been able to practice my craft. You know, uh, for uh, writers who want to emulate, you know, this kind of trail that you follow, uh, rejection is a big, big factor of it. Uh, you know, there are thousands of books written every mm -hmm. day and, you know, rejection is pretty much 99%, I think. Right, right. Um, to make a career is obviously very difficult. Uh, but I think we could not, you know, uh, we have to keep that... Uh, a Kindle burning, I mm. think. Yeah, yeah, uh, so yeah. how do you encourage them? Is well, it an alternative career you have to pick up? Well, no, I mean, I think you have to develop a thick skin um, and and learn to take disappointment in your stride, right? And uh, just keep on doing what you're doing and practice it every day and stick to it. I mean, I, it's not just that after you get published, the world changes and suddenly you're being treated well all over. You will still get criticism. You will get rejection even then. Right, um, so I think there's, that's what I meant by stubbornness. There's a kind of, um, I guess in Hindi you would say, "deet hona padta." You just have to stick to it, and um, partly also I think uh, you're doing it because the act itself gives you pleasure because you want to do it, and that desire is what takes you forward through um, all of all of the rejections and the disappointments. And I think it's the same in any field, but in art you tend to feel it more personally because you're putting so much of yourself in your work. So when somebody rejects your work, what people uh, feel like is that you're being rejected personally yourself, right? And so that becomes very hard for people to handle. Um, it's especially difficult, I'm a writer, so there's a, I mean, I sort of make an object and that object is what goes into the world and people read, but uh, I really respect actors because they put their body on the line, right? And their whole soul and their personality. And what they have to deal with is un unimaginable. I mean, I've grown up around the film industry in Bombay, and I really respect anybody who gets into that field. Uh, what is your personal uh, you know, way of uh, inspiring yourself, picking up the nuances? There's no way I think you know an author can put a thinking hat and say, "Oh, today I know I'm going to sit down and start mm -hmm. writing." Mm -hmm. I think you're constantly thinking and picking up things around right. you. Uh, what inspires you? How do you well, do it? I think you have to write about something that obsesses you. If there is some image, some thought that is in your mind and it won't leave you, that's what you have to write about because that's where the energy is. And I should also say that that sometimes is very painful because you are obsessed with things often that hurt, right? Uh, but you have to follow it and you have to follow your curiosity. And this is very important because writing a novel especially is a long task. I mean, to my last novel took me probably somewhere between eight and nine years to write. So you have to find something that gives you enough energy to stick to it for that long. Um, so it's got to be something that you're curious about. And sometimes it starts very simply. I mean, the reason I started working on that book was I was living in Bombay. And like every other citizen noticed 
the huge influence of organized crime everywhere around me in the politics and civics and the social sphere. Um, and I had friends in the film industry who were getting extortion calls and some of them were walking around with bodyguards and so I started to wonder what is, why is this happening, right? And so that one question then leads you into this world that I knew nothing about, right? I, the mm -hmm. only thing I knew about um, gangsters was what I had seen in Arj mm -hmm. Satya, you know, and, and, and in movies. So that curiosity is what leads you forward and then what you try and do is that curiosity then gives you answers, but the, those answers always lead you to the next question. And then out of all that material, you try and make a story out of it. Um, so uh, it can be very draining and very exhausting, but I think that's what actually works. For, and I, I'll say this, this is true of a lot of writers that, that I know, that um, the people who are most successful and make the best stories are doing it because they not just for sort of the sake of doing it, but because they have a need to do it. A um, few celebrated authors, you know, convert their stories into movies. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, I think, a coming of the age of mm -hmm. the author in some mm -hmm. sense. But some don't have to do it. Uh, how do you view that? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable with having um, stuff made, taken from one medium and put into another. The Sacred Games, which is the book about policing and crime in Bombay, uh, it might get made into a television series. But I mean, the thing that um, you learn about the film industry is that you can never be sure it's going to happen until the day they start shooting. <laughs> so, so I have my fingers crossed, um, but it's a very different media, medium. Um, I'm not going to try and write the screenplay because it's very foreign to me, and so I have a screenwriter that I trust, and she will do the conversion. Uh, but sometimes it can be very exhilarating and, and you get pieces of art uh, in film and television that stand up on their own right, right? that are incredible in them, on themselves. And working uh, with, with my screenwriter, I mean, that's what is also very encouraging is because she sees the story in ways that I didn't imagine it, right? So I'm constantly surprised by what she can do with the same material, but she just turns it a little bit and it becomes something new and different. Uh, coming to the publishing industry, it is going itself through you know, a lot of disruption. Mm -hmm. uh, technology is, is enabling yeah. that. Yeah. Um, how do you see that evolving? Well, I mean, I think, um, I think especially in the West, the, the death of newspapers and magazines has been an incredible thing to watch because it's happened so quickly. And people have not found a way to respond to it. Um, that that is adequate to the crisis, right? Um, but I suppose that is inevitable whenever a new technology comes onto the scene. Um, so, you know, books are also technologies, right? So the printing press created its own disruption three, four hundred years back and was equally resented by all the people who used to work on the manuscript culture, right? The scribes and the writers, the artists who used to work on that. Um, so it's a very uh, interesting period to be a writer in. I think in some sense, your reach is much wider um, uh, and the speed with which your audience reacts to you is much quicker. I get emails all the time right, um, from people who are reading my books. So that becomes a very interesting conversation, I think, which was not just hard. I think it was probably have been impossible before. Um, I will say, though, that at least in the realm of the arts, uh, technological innovation from the point of the artist has not been productive enough. And what I mean by that is that I want to use the new technology to tell stories as a writer, right? So the promise at one point in the 90s was that I could use various media in my book, right? Like, so the idea that music and visuals would be incorporated into the narrative storytelling. It's been tried, but it's never really been successful, I think, because the tools are still too hard for writers to use, right? So if I'm going to be struggling with HTML while I'm trying to tell a story, that disrupts my process. I don't want to do that, right? Um, and I think that is true in, in large part in writing, in visual arts. Um, uh, what happens is that you en then end up diverting a huge amount of your artistic energy and your resources towards making that interaction happen. So I have a friend, um, Cornelia Funk, she's a children's book writer, um, and she's for a long time has been wanting to do 
a multimedia Apple app around her books, right? So she wanted to do this, and it was finally she got so frustrated she ended up paying for it herself at enormous cost and got it done. And it's a beautiful app, but it took her years and I mean enormous amounts of money in the seven, six seven figure range wow. to actually do it, right? So. That's why I think the innovation in the arts itself is not happening as fast as the innovation around the art, right? So like ticket selling, ticket buying, uh, putting stuff up on YouTube, all that has become much easier. Right. But making the thing itself is not simple, right? I think the only place where I have seen it change really radically is film, right? Because now you can literally, two guys can make a film on an iPhone, right? right? A feature length film. And I've seen some work that is very good, which is being done on that scale. But in the other areas, I don't see as much innovation. And I think there's a great need for it. Mm -hmm. Vikram, thank you. It's been Appreciate a pleasure. It. Thank you.